find me having fun. And there's a number of reasons for me having fun. I will list them for you. One, I'm in a hot hatch. Hot hatches are my kind of car. Second, it's French. French hot hatches are really my kind of car. I've owned a couple, love them. Third, it's the daddy of them all, or at least it used to be. It's the Renault Sport Megane. Fourth, I like annoying people by calling it the Renault Sport Megane. For some reason, everyone's kind of got on the Megane RS train. I think Renault Sport Megane sounds heaps better, and it annoys people when I do it, so that's always fun. Leave something in the comments, and if you like, or even if you don't like it, subscribe. It would be wonderful if you could do that for me. Fifth, this is sacrilege. As you've probably already worked out, I'm in a Renault Sport Megane, but I'm not having to move my hands from the wheel to change gears because this car is a twin clutch. I know. And this is the kind of thing that makes people very upset. And people get very angry about change. So when the Renault Sport Clio, which used to be a two litre naturally aspirated beast of a thing, it was only manual. It was only three door. Renault apparently if you were to listen to the internet, threw the baby out with the bath water and the bath water and the bath and all of the bathroom fittings when it changed the Clio. Because it went to a 1.6 litre turbo and it only came in a six speed twin clutch. That really, really upset people. And if you listen to them, Renault weren't gonna sell a single one of them because everyone was gonna hate them. Yeah, they've sold a ton of them, particularly here in Australia. The sales have gone through the roof. So, Clearly it was a good decision. So here we are in a six speed twin clutch Renault Sport Megane. There's even more to talk about because so much more has changed. Let's have a look. At least you can still get it in the Larry liquid yellow. So let's start at the top. The Renault Sport Megane is now exclusively a five-door hatch. It's just too expensive to do a low-volume three-door shell in a world that's absolutely mad for SUVs and not buying hatchbacks. So you're just gonna have to live with a more practical hot hatch. This is the Renault Sport Megane in standard sport chassis. This thing looks great. I hadn't seen the new RS Megane until the day before we shot and the photos I had seen don't do it justice. It has presence. Those massive pumped up guards more than make up for the five doors. One of the first things you really notice about the new Megane is how pumped up it is. It's pretty aggro looking. So the plastic guards are now 60 millimeters wider. I love the fact they're still plastic. It's such a Megane thing. And at the back, they're 45 millimeters wider and it's to fit in all the modded suspension. It's also to fit in these monster wheels. These are 19 inches in diameter and they're running on 245 Bridgestone rubber. And they're only on 35s, which is not a lot of sidewall, somehow the ride survives. You've also got these Brembo brakes, which are really, really good. And you can't see it, but in here, the steering knuckles have been moved further towards the wheel hub to reduce torque steer. That's quite a nerdy detail change, but it's a good one because there isn't much torque steer. Under the bonnet, <laughs> and under this very French mess of piping and cables and stuff, is a 1.8 litre four cylinder with a twin scroll turbo. So while the size is down, power is actually up to 205 kilowatts, which is about 280 metric horsepower. So power's up like four kilowatts. And it has 390 newton metres of torque, which is 30 newton metres up. More torque is always a good thing. Underneath all that is a Nissan block, which is shared across the group, but it's got a Renault Sport head. And for extra nerd points, the cylinder bores have plasma lining, which is something you find on cars like BMW's B58 straight six cylinder engine and the Nissan GTR. So in this car, we've got the six speed twin clutch manual and I quite like this. So in the Megane, it's got its own gear set. So it is the same transmission as in other Renaults, but it's just, you know, it's obviously stronger to cope with all the extra torque and power and it's got its own gear set. So it's a bit more closely packed. It's it's really good. Like, if you're on the fence, give it a go. 
a cabin. This is a much better cabin than the old car. I've driven the new Megane before, but really having this new cabin in this car, it's it's great. It's a little bit stark, but here in the Sport, there's all these little carbon fiber bits. And, and on the door pull here, there's this little clever bit where you put your thumb so you don't wear through the plastic. I quite like that, that's good. Cool. New dash is great. I hated the old dash. It was angled away from you and that just that just seemed weird. I didn't understand why. I couldn't even think of an artistic reason to do that. And the new digital dash, it changes with the modes that you choose. And you've also got all this extra telemetry stuff over here in this screen. Which brings me to this screen. The 8.7 inch screen is all wrong. It's this way instead of that way. I don't like portrait mode, it's not cool. So you press Apple CarPlay and it's marooned here in the middle. It's all alone, somewhere strange and odd. And when you press RS drive and you've got music playing, it all stutters and carries on. Oh, it's like there's just not enough hardware behind it. And I mean, it's just, it's the wrong shape. It's just done the wrong way. It needs to be over like that. However, it does make sense when you go into the telemetry, when you're in full on RS mode, you can look at your throttle traces and all of that. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, I think most people would prefer it if it was the correct way. So let's start with the obvious, the gearbox. I like it. I actually like it in the Clio. I think it's really good. And you know, there's been a lot of change. So we've got to talk about all these changes. So the six speed gearbox in race mode, really good. Like really quite something. And I love, I love the thing it does where if you're all breaking into a corner and you know, when you're really moving, you just hold the down paddle and it will change down for you to the right gear. It's really cool, I like that. It's something that more cars should do. So is it all right in the auto? Yeah, I'm quite happy with it in the auto. The chassis, oh. Renault Sport Megane's have always been fantastic, right from that fat-bottomed Patrick Le Camon unit, and I loved that car. I mean, dreadful in most ways, but to drive was just wonderful. Uh, it's always had this really firm, sometimes uncomfortable chassis, and certainly the last of the 265, 275, 285s that I drove, oh boy, that was hard. This one's got the hydraulic stops that the, the Clio has, and it really, it's transformed the ride of the car, but it's still so good to drive. It's, it's got so much grip. We've just happened upon a Toyota Kluger. So I'll talk about these things with high energy, even though we're not absolutely thrashing along. The brakes are great. We've got the Brembo calipers on big discs. I mean, a 355, this isn't a light car. I mean, let's, let's, let's not pretend this is light. It's almost 1,500 kilos which is quite a bit. There are some Mitsubishi SUVs that are lighter than this. I love the seats in this car. Not everyone's on board. Some passengers have complained about the armrest being too low and the window sill being too high. I don't recall the old Megane having a terrific driving position, but I'm really, I really like this driving position. I drive a little bit close, as I probably mentioned before. But yeah, the, the wheel's good and chunky. You can, there's plenty of movement in it. One thing I will say is I'm not super keen on how high the, the paddles are. They are fixed uh, to the column, GTR style. Um, but yeah, they're a bit high and that's because of this wacky uh, French paddle thing that, that they use for the, um, the audio system. But is this, is, has this moved the game on? Yeah, I mean, even though the engine's smaller, it's still got a bit more power, it's got way more torque, and it, uh, it goes. Here's the thing though, this car has something special, something it shares with, well not just special cars, but extraordinary cars. It's got, it's got something that it shares with the Lamborghini Aventador S, which I've driven. It's got something that it shares with the Ferrari 812 Superfast, which I've driven. I mean, it shares this important thing 
stacked with cars, many multiples the cost of this. And they're performance cars. This particular feature's been put into them because they're fast and it will improve what it does. And it, it's a feature that we that just came out of nowhere after disappearing. It, it, it arrived in the mid 90s with Mazda and, and Honda. They got very excited and started putting four wheel steering on cars and then it just went away. And then it arrived again with the Ferrari F12 TDF and then on the A12 Superfast. And it's on this French hot hatch. How good is that? Four wheel steering. Now the amazing thing about four wheel steering is if you get it right, it really, really makes the car work amazingly. So in my first drive in anger, I was coming into a hairpin that I know well, and I nearly wiped it down the inside of the hairpin because of the way this thing turns in. This, because the rears in race mode turn up to 2.5 degrees opposite to the front. So it really makes the car pivot around the, the center of the car. So you've got to actually be really awake when you pile into a corner. Over 100, the wheels turn the same way because one imagines it's more of a lane change than a, <laughs> a big corner. But you know, this thing's got so much grip that I do imagine, and I have read other people saying that mid corner, it will change from the wheels being in the opposite direction to being the same direction, which effectively lengthens the wheelbase of the car, which is probably mentally a little unsettling, but no one I know has been the car as a result. That's quite amazing to have four wheel steer on a car that is not that much more expensive than most of its rivals. Here in Australia, it's more expensive than the i30N, but cheaper than just about anything else. You know, all of its rivals. And this kind of fits in between, you know, a bog standard Golf GTI and a Civic Type R, because it's got a lot of power and a lot of features. I'm impressed. I love the fact it has four wheel steer. I think that's brilliant. But what if you're like me? What if you like changing gears? What if you're one of those Renault Sport Megane people who just has to have it in manual? Well, you can have one of these. You can have a six-speed manual Renault Sport Megane. Yes, it hasn't gone, it's still there. And not only is that a manual, but it's also a cup chassis, so it's harder and faster. The Cup chassis is stiffer and more hardcore with two-piece rotors and red Brembo calipers. They're still 355mm, which you need with a car that's this fast and almost 1.5 tonnes. There is also a Torsen limited slip diff to help get the power down. Yeah, now I'm having even more fun! <laughs> now, that's probably slightly biasing you towards the manual. I mean, it's a manual. Manuals are great. You're in control. You're doing your thing. But what's also different about this car is it not only has the traditional purest pleasing manual transmission, it's also got the cup chassis. Now, I like it. Here's the interesting thing. Whenever I've driven a cup chassis Clio, I've always found it too hard and preferred the softer sport chassis. This one this is different. I'm, I'm actually, I'm not sure if I would be down on the cup chassis the way I am on the Clio. I know it's counterintuitive. Oh, you've always got to have the stiff one. But in the Clio, it's just, it makes the ride uncomfortable and a bit difficult. Still got, obviously still got the four wheel steering. Uh, but yeah, it's still got that quite fluid ride quality. I mean, it's still firm, don't get me wrong. It's not like it's some magic carpet ride, but it's it's not as, I mean, the old car 
genuinely, I didn't think was an everyday proposition. I, I genuinely thought, yeah, I, I'm not sure I could drive this every day. I mean, it, for a weekend fast blast car, phew, it was just unbeatable. It really was, until, you know, a couple of other cars came along. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't think you'd live with it, but this, yeah, I could do it. What else does the Cup chassis have? Well, it has a Torsen limited slip diff, which is, like in Australia, it's only 1500 bucks more, which is like, you know, a thousand US dollars or, or um, well, at the moment, before hard Brexit, it's about 600 pounds. <laughs> it's not a bit more than that, 700 pounds. And so, uh, yeah, you really, as if the car doesn't turn in amazingly already with the four wheel steer, that. That toss and let means you can go in faster, get on the power earlier, and just absolutely rip through the corners. I am all about limited slip diffs in front wheel drive hot hatches. They really do make a huge difference. I once drove a 208 GTI and a 208 GTI with a limited slip diff back to back uh, on a racetrack, and the difference is extraordinary. If you have the means, get a limited slip diff, no matter what the car is, anyway. Back to the show. It also has beefier brakes from Brembo, uh, two-piece rotors, and bimaterial brakes. And I think that's probably the same thing as the two-piece rotors, but you know, spec sheets are weird. It's got all the qualities of the standard car, just sharper. And you know, you don't always want or need sharper, but when the price difference is that low, it's kind of like, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do it? But really, we're here to talk about the gearbox. Now, Renault's manual gearboxes have not always been particularly slick, shall we say. They've always been a little bit hard to get on with. Uh, and you, oh, that rear wheel steer is so good, so good. Um, sorry, back to the gearbox. They've always been a little bit hard to get on with. This one is a lot more fluid. It's easier to get the right gear. It feels good. I've read people complaining about the size of the, the gear knob, but I don't know, it's fine. I, <laughs> it doesn't bother me in the slightest. It's actually quite good. And I don't have big hands. I don't have little Trump hands either, but I don't have big hands. This is more fun than the standard chassis. And I think only the least keen of drivers would really want to stay away from the cup chassis. That's how good, that's how good this is. The French do really good ride in cars. Well, they forgot it for a while and then they got it back again. I don't know what happened. It's probably some complex geopolitical thing that is beyond me, but they, they got back to doing cars that ride well, and I'm really pleased about that. But to make a cup chassis ride this well, I mean, it's quite livable. This is a super bumpy road, and you can see that my carefully done hair isn't bouncing around all over the place, or my moobs aren't jiggling. I'll tell you what, my rustles are jimmied by this Winnebago in the middle of the road, not indicating its intention. But having said all of that about the manual, I do really think that this is a tough choice between the manual and the twin clutch because the twin clutch is that good. I mean, the manual's great. And it, as I say, it is more, you, you're more in control and you, you get to do your healing and towing and all of that, which is something that I really enjoy doing. But yeah, there's something about that twin clutch that I quite like, apart from the irritating rollback on some um, on some hill starts. But you know, anyone who's owned a Renault Sport Clio knows you just learned a left foot brake at <laughs> traffic lights that are on a hill. Hmm, this is gonna require some thought. Auto, manual. Cup, sport. Lurid orange, 
lurid yellow. So many choices. But the great thing is that if you've made the Megane your choice, you've chosen a good car. The other choices are just about what you want. I really like that about the new Megane. The old Megane was fairly uncompromising, really hard. The manual gearbox, you kind of had to and it was just, it wasn't really a car you could drive every day. These two are suddenly everyday cars, but still with that amazing, competent, fast, hot hatch feel. A family could own one of these and no one's gonna be upset. That's really cool. But in the end, I've got to answer the question, is it the daddy again? I don't know, because there is, it's all so close. You've got the Focus RS, you've got the Civic Type R. Yep, they're more expensive. You've got the Hyundai i30N, which in most markets is a lot cheaper and it is brilliant. It's hard to choose, but the great thing about having so many good cars is the agony of choice. It's a good agony. And for some extra nerd points, it's got plasma lining on the cylinder bores, which is something that I could remember just five minutes ago.